Hi. <laughs> Hi. Live from uh, Oakland, California. <laughs> yes. We are here having a potluck with a lot of friends from the area, from the Bay Area. Yes, welcome. I see the hearts are are showing. There's the eleven <laughs> people. How? Already, eleven people have joined us from around the twelve. Hi from New Zealand. <laughs> and they type in thirteen. And they type in little hearts. Oh wow! That's that's they're sending their love. Hi and from they also, Sydney. Hi from Sydney, New Zealand. Wow. Oh, that's sweet. It's a different world. Yes. yes. Yeah, we're just having a great time here after a weekend swirl to come out here. Yes, we uh, we did a beautiful gathering last night and uh, had um, a lunch with uh, the publisher of A Course in Miracles, Judy and um, Wit. Wit, yeah, <laughs> for about five and a half hours. Wow. So. Well, what did we take away from our our lunch today? Hmm. I think what, yeah, we, we met with Judy and Judy's daughter and husband and um, we talked a, a lot of things. She told us a lot of parables um, with Ken and Helen, but I guess for me what um, I felt after five and a half hours talk is that we are we, we, we are having a mission in this life, and every one of us really, we, we, we come here to do forgiveness work. That is really the essence of the only thing that we are here to do. And yet in, in, in form, it looks different ways, and it seems like we all have our mission, and it's for us to really accept it, and I actually accept it fully. That's really what I feel as I was talking to them, to accept our function so fully and we don't have to play small or feeling like we're taking an insignificant role because as as long as we accept our own function we our part is so essential and it's up to us to say yes and really step up in our strength and in accepting the, the atonement and the function that was given to us that's what I felt yeah, how profound that is. And also, I had mentioned to some people this year that I thought this would be a year of surprises and happy surprises, but nevertheless surprises. And so, I enjoyed hearing some of the parables today. Uh, one of them was Judy was talking about how she had this profound healing after being emailed by a young woman who was maybe 12, 10, 12, mm. and, and following the instructions of this 12-year-old which led to an amazing healing in her life, one of the most profound healings in her life. And uh, in our community, you know, we always watch the use of, of pairings and relationships and configurations, and there's all kinds of configuration shifts happening. We're watching a possible budding relationship of of someone who's 59 with someone who's 23. <laughs> That's kind of an interesting one. Uh, it's all kinds of surprises that are coming. So I think that what I took away from it was, uh, you can't prepare for the form that the healing will occur. You just have to desire the healing, and then you have to accept whatever form shows up. And, and seeing all these amazing synchronicities that are happening, we're just, uh, just amazed at all the different ways it comes in. And, and you can sit back, and, and Judy was saying today how, there's things, even the difficult times in her life and the times when she felt mm. was the, mm. some of the struggles, she can see now how perfect it was, like every single nuance was mm. leading to what needed to, to happen. She said like nothing is um, is by accident and all, all dots in your life eventually connect, connect and you'll see it. So, and she also s said that there is no skill or anything that she developed throughout her life that was not used by the Holy Spirit. So, so it's like very, even the mistakes. Very encouraging, you know. Is no, nothing is by mistake and nothing is by chance. And anything that somehow we're good at it, or we don't have to feel 
that that is not gonna be useful in our journey of awakening is all gonna be really really essential eventually to serve the plan and and it's our job to in, embrace it so fully and really allow this body and all our skills to be used yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's been beautiful too because over the last 14 years of having lunches with judy i think this was maybe my like fifth or sixth time but she's always relayed these experiences where there seems to be something extreme going on with the body whether it's a a massive heart attack or it's a falling and not being able to move or whatever and then there's this something inside of her that's just either smiling or laughing when these mm -hmm. things happen mm -hmm. uh, that's so far back and so detached that it, it just finds it she finds it laughable and I think that's a good little symbol of the spirit too in us that no matter how much the ego judges something or judges a strain or something difficult or challenging, there's a part of our mind that really is, is having a big laugh. And we actually can tune into that part at any point, even when you're laying on the floor, or even when you're in the middle of what seemed to be a massive heart attack or whatever, you can always quickly zoom into this point and feel the lightness and the laughter around the whole thing. And that was beautiful too, that's a great reminder. Mm. And another thing is she said um, her husband, Wit, is actually very much into measurement and precision and, and he actually asked Bill Thetford one, once um, how to measure my progress, progress and how, how far am I into awakening and, mm -hmm. and Bill said, um, how long do you hold grievance? That is a good measurement <laughs> and mm -hmm. I thought that's, that's really beautiful because it's not on the linear timelines like you know, that's something that we all can connect with. How long do I hold a grievance, really? Yeah, yeah. And we also talked about, um, I think the, one of the early themes was perpetuation, perpetuating what's been given, like uh, the Foundation for Inner Peace is the original publisher of A Course in Miracles, and they go through their challenges and and shifting and changing in terms of who's on the board and leadership and all kinds of things that are going as the, as the founders and the elders are growing older and stepping out there are new ones stepping in and really I look around the room we're all part of it's like Star Trek this is the next generation we're not <laughs> we're not Spock and Kirk we're actually uh, the next generation you know we've come in to carry the torch and you could feel it uh, you could feel Judy is part of, a, and Wynn are part of a handoff, they're handing it over mm. and, and we're kind of saying, job well done, you have done very, very well and uh, there's a passing of the torch but there's a, there's a perpetuation with it, there's a continuity and, and yet we all agree that it comes down to moment by moment prayer mm. and that seemed to be the theme that was coming up, tuning in in a prayerful way, feeling the prayer, staying with it and trusting that and that was one story after another about that prayer. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So it's really beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I really like that, you know, they're both in their 80s and they're still talking about their forgiveness lessons and how they, they use everyday lives and, and watch the, the emotions that come up that to be, forgive, to be forgiven, you know, that's still like a very much part of what they practice and and Witt actually said until you start to practice across miracles it means nothing like it, you haven't started yet until the moment that you start to practice that mm -hmm. so I really like that yeah mm -hmm. there's some interesting things because uh, Francis and Witt were going back and forth with the Mandarin and then um, there was one point where Witt was talking about how when he was in Taiwan and when he's been over in China and so forth that that the most fascinating thing for him was not the Asian, was not the language, it was trying to merge into what he called the Asian mind or mm -hmm. looking at being so much like a curious child almost wanting to say how are these people that I'm with, how are they viewing the world? He found that fascinating, you could see that sparkle and also he was, uh, was part of the United Nations you know, embassy emissaries to uh, China, so 
Uh, last time we had lunch, uh, I don't know if you remember Sundar, he was telling some of those stories of, of how he, he was over in Taiwan and then finally he, he and a delegation from the United States got called into, into mainland China and the purpose of going in was to meet Mao. Mao Zedong. And so that, there they are, they go in as an American delegation to meet Mao. And it's a weekend, I think he said, and they're waiting, you know, to meet Mao. And then Mao dies. <laughs> Mao dies. The only reason they've got into the country is to meet Mao, and Mao dies. And so the people of the Chinese government around there, they're like, they didn't know what to do with the American delegation. They had him there, so they just sent him off to. Uh, I think it was Tibet. <laughs> they just sent them, I get them out of here, we don't know what to do. We've got an American delegation here. So they sent them to Tibet and just turned them out on the streets of Tibet. <laughs> this is the American delegation. And Whit was one of them, so he was out there. And then um, I think it was cold, it was wet, he was out, thrown out into the streets. And at one point I think um, he he, developed, got he got very, very sick. I forget what it was, food poison poisoning or something like this. He got very, very, very sick and so he was dying and so he, at one point, he said, told the story where he was like dying there and he said, Jesus, I just want to thank you for all the things. He said, I've lived such a wonderful, full life and I just have to say here as I'm dying, I'm so, so grateful. And he almost stopped his prayer there but then he said, and if you have anything else that I can do for you at all on the planet, <laughs> then you just, I'm your man, I'm your man. And those, those, then they get, they get rescued somehow. He makes it back, he ends up marrying Judy Scutch and, uh, and being a head of charge of all these. I think there's 25, he said 25 translations of A Course in Miracles. So, uh, it's like if you ever get to the point where you just offer your life up to Jesus and say, thank you for everything, and if there's anything else you want me, you to, want do me to do, I'm your man. I'm your man. Uh, you can say that, because there's a saying in the Bible, to, much, to those who much is, is given, much will be asked or required. And I think his, we, life. his life took that way, and we find that's the way our life did. You know, as soon as you have that prayer of the heart and you say, use me, take over my life, you know, you are in charge and, and I am no longer trying to run my life. If you think you were busy before, if you think you were working before, at a job, a corporation or whatever, you ain't seen nothing yet. You will, to those who much is given, much is required. And so when you give your mind to the spirit and you take it away from the ego, then the spirit's going to use all the skills and abilities that the ego developed in the plan of awakening for everybody, for the whole universe. Like that movie, The Island, some of you might have seen Scarlett Johansson, Ewan McGregor, they get away from, from the Cloneville <laughs> and, and yet when they get out there they have a temptation to just kind of go off and, and live their couple human life and then they are called back to go back right into the beast and free all the prisoners, set all the captives free. And that's what's in our heart. We, we're here to set everyone free. And as Jesus says, as long, you will not be free as long as one slave walks the earth. Mm -hmm. So you have to have such a complete change of mind. <laughs> not that there are individual slaves, but as long as you believe in the ego, in the little, in the tiniest bit, then everyone you see is in slavery, including how you perceive yourself. And when you heal your mind by releasing the judgment and the perspective of the ego, then everyone is set free simultaneously. So, very quantum. Mm. So we left some books there. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we left some gifts. Well, the, the other two things that I thought were really interesting, when they were talking about Helen receiving the Course and how she was not, her mission, her function was such that she wasn't to apply the Course. And that was so interesting, just uh, that the rest of them were applying it to their lives and their situations, but that wasn't her function, that wasn't her, her mission, her dot by dot, because it wouldn't have worked well if she had. And just the perfection of David being David, and Gia being Gia, and each of us just being Val being Val. And, I mean, how we're on our own perfect dot-dot path, and even if it doesn't look like it, even if 
Helen wasn't applying the Course to her life in the same way the others were. And that was very, very interesting to me, just thinking about that, thinking about the perfection of the dot-by-dot dot place we find ourselves and how our path piggybacks and fits all together over time. And the other thing that um, was really good for me to hear was that the atonement was not at one but the correction. Because sometimes I think of it that way, and that seemed to give me a seeding for fruitful contemplation of, of that, um, and what the atonement is and what it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. We actually uh, also had heard the story of Willis Harmon. Some of you know Willis Harmon, who's quite a famous uh, transpersonal psychotherapist from right out, out in this area. And um, I think he wanted to meet Helen, and so uh, they arranged for Helen to meet him. And he was on a, he had to catch a plane, so he didn't have much time. So they had kind of a brief encounter, and that was beautiful today. Judy was talking about how um, finally Willis just looked uh, Helen right in the eye and said, so what is the what does the Course mean to you? And Judy saw this little look in Helen's eye, almost like she was going to give him a quick flip, flip, flip an answer. But actually she, she was very, very sincere. And she said, what, which has been quoted I think by Judy, a very famous line, uh, I know the Course is true, I just don't believe it. And uh, Willis was like, thank you. Okay, got to catch my plane. And then later, the, the rest of the story, like Paul Harvey, the rest of the story was, um, Judy basically looked at Helen and said uh, something like, um, I don't buy it, and, and I don't really think that's really what you meant. You, you have to change in that a D to a W. And it's, it was Judy saying, uh, I, I know that the Course is true, I just won't believe it, will not. This volition involved, don't is more of just the way things are, but won't. So, so in one sense we got to feel the perfection as, that Sundari was talking about, everyone's playing their part perfectly, regardless of how they judge it, if they think they're in resistance or denial, or they're not fully able to do it or not, that doesn't really matter. There is a perspective that shows that everyone is playing their part perfectly from this higher perspective, but we have to be willing to open to the higher perspective. Mm. And that was what I took from, from that story. It was a beautiful, not a don't, but a won't. Yes. And then we're constantly having to really be honest with ourselves, how willing am I to practice? How willing am I to transfer the training? And you know, it's one thing to study whatever pathway you study, but how willing am I to just let go and truly practice? I think Bill Thetford was a good example of that. Mm -hmm. I know um, in the last couple of years of his life, he just took it so sincerely that he just used every moment to practice, regardless of whatever happened in his life mm -hmm. before that. Mm -hmm. it's, that's really what it's about, practical application. So we're here with a beautiful group of people, and yeah, this is our our wrap up to our quick trip, mm. our quick tour, two day tour. <laughs> yeah. Very profound. Anyone have anything they want to share or ask or? Well, I do have a question, <laughs> and uh, it ties into what you were saying. Ooh, my hair! <laughs> so it ties into to what uh, Francis was saying, like uh, you know, um, the the answer about how long does it take to. Which word, verb did you use? Forgive? How long does it take to... Hold forgiveness or grievance. Oh yeah, how long does it take to let go of grievances? And then, um, and then when I heard you say that, I'm thinking, wow, well, well, I'm holding grievances of myself 
since ever in a and that goes back to that unworthiness like I'm trying to <laughs> learn to play the piano and I can play a certain way and then my sister she's visiting and she came next to me to hear what I was playing and all of a sudden I make all, a million mistakes and I feel very uncomfortable as if like this sense of unworthiness or I need to get punished if someone wants to think that I'm good at something I'm kind of sabotaging myself so it's like I can't let go of grievances against myself it's as if I have something against myself and so my question is uh, what do we do with that <laughs> this sense of unworthiness and holding grievances against ourselves is there something about letting go grievances about other people but when it's about your own self like I don't even have like some with other people it's as if you okay I'm not going to see that person for a while and I'm going to breathe and pray and, and uh, but it's like when it's like inside you can't even see it mm -hmm. so I don't know if you have something to say about that <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah actually um, today we talked about um, everybody's called but few choose to answer like we actually talked a little bit about that and I I felt like um, Judy also said that like everybody's called not necessarily called to to be on the pathway of a course in miracles but everybody is called regardless regardless and I feel like the spirit really is calling us to accept his guidance and to take that on and and that is scary so a lot of the times the unworthiness isn't something that is static is is you know this is me I'm just unworthy a lot of the times is this resistant unconscious resistance and fear to accept what is given because we know uh, some part of our mind that that we're gonna be expanding so much we we're not gonna be the same anymore because our consciousness is gonna expand as we accept the function that's given by the spirit step by step even as um, Tamara who is Judy's daughter I think she she had a foundation all her life Judy all the way till she is now 84 and she never thought her daughter would be interested to take it on and and they never had this kind of discussion I guess and then her daughter was called and it, it was her time and Jesus is calling her and she just suddenly said yes and and Judy was like surprised oh my god I would never have guessed that she would have said yes but that is really our function you know we're not really here to battle with the ego to to like a, you know let go of certain kind of self-concept but where our our responsibility is to accept the spirit's calling and the spirit's guidance step by step and that is the only way to to take us out of this unworthiness this smallness and weakness you know yeah and I think this thing too about mistakes you know, it's like when you when you watch animals in nature, or you watch uh, animals playing, and they do all kinds of things. There doesn't seem to be that self-consciousness uh, yeah. that's that's so concerned. Or even when you watch children playing, um, they can do all kinds of goofy things. Uh, we were just you were just saying, oh, look at my hair. You know, yeah. you know, you know yeah. kids they look like him, and they're not thinking about their hair or they're not thinking about what they're wearing if they've got stains all over their their shirt from playing in the you know, mud all over the face and everything so they don't really care it's like reorienting away from this idea of mistakes as if there's some kind of a standard you know they always say dance as if no one is watching yeah. you know be in that place where you just relax and relax more and more and and it can just flow through and flow through and flow through with with no judgment about how it looks and I mean I've even met people that are like singing coaches and they actually will tell me everyone can sing in their mind that's their mindset they just believe everyone can sing they don't believe that there's some that can sing and some that can't mm -hmm. or same with dancing and different things like this so it's it's really this the guilt is coming from this sense of a, of a personality self and a world outside of that 
somehow that that this personality self has to measure up yeah. and there's a lot of comparison with other people and those kind of things and you know to, to get into a, a place and even to practice that in relationships of of letting everyone off the hook so that you can let your mind off the hook mm -hmm. as well you know judge not lest yeah. you be judged yeah. if, if we're still categorizing people and judging them then we'll do the same to ourself and that keeps the mind bound yeah yeah i see that thank you yeah. <laughs> onward and upward <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm a big judger that's so cool to see that <laughs> Yeah, not the real you. Yeah, yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. mm. We have a very contemplative group here. <laughs> oh, I'm just reading that. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm on. <laughs> they look just like us, the people watching. Then, <laughs> like other cameras, when you look into a lens, you're, just, you're, you're looking. You say, "I'm in the, I'm in the motion picture." <laughs> Why, everybody? We're in the movie. On the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. What's for dinner? They type. Here's oh, des here's that? dessert. <laughs> Bliss. <laughs> Bliss. Bliss is for dinner. <laughs> oh. Oh, thank you all for tuning in. We thought we would do a periscope, and we we remembered. Yeah. <laughs> the hearts are flying. <laughs> Bye. We'll say goodbye Bye. from Bye. Oakland. Bye. 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 Come again. <laughs>